because of these remarks from Chinese President Xi Jinping this morning. President Xi trying to ease some of those trade tensions with the U.S., promising to lower import tariffs and to open China's economy. Well, have we heard that one before? Is now any different? Joining me right now, National Taxpayers Union senior fellow, Maddie Duppler. Maddie, good to have you here. Um, yeah. Are you encouraged? <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. Let's put it that way. It should not be surprising to anyone to hear China talk about liberalizing its markets. Mm -hmm. They've got one and a half billion people. They know every industrial nation on earth wants access to those markets. So what we heard really wasn't super surprising. I think it would be a mistake to claim victory in those remarks. However, mm -hmm. it's also a mistake to say that the blunt instrument of tariffs is the right way to go about trying to find an equilateral agreement with China where we have a fair and free open trade process. And there's been a lot of discussion about how we accomplish that. Tariffs, of course, are ways to hold American consumers hostage for problems that all of the world faces right now. Mm -hmm. The entire global community really needs to be enjoined to try and put pressure on China to not only liberalize wow. their economies, but also to have better trading practices with their partners. Dare I say, might that be a TPP 2.0? In other words, <laughs> this, uh, in, in fact, the president recently referenced this. We tried to hold China more accountable by creating yep. a uh, Trans-Pacific trade partnership in which we would have joined forces with other countries over there and said, okay, China, you know, if you want to do business with any of us, you're going to have to play by the rules. Yep. Um, we didn't do so, and now we're kind of going it on our own. That said, Maddie, we are their number one biggest customer. So, yes, I hear you in that yeah. it hurts average Americans, and, you know, we don't quite have the... The, the, the threshold for that kind of pain that maybe a, a Chinese uh, a, a Chinese uh, regime yeah. does because they're there no matter what we're, right. we can vote our folks out uh, <laughs> but nonetheless nonetheless uh, we do have power that we have not used and do you think that the use of this now with the promise of more tariffs in addition to steel is scaring China in any way I think there's certainly a scare tactic here, but I would argue that tariffs should only be that, a scare tactic, because tariffs in practice are attacks on consumers. And you're right, you know, we have democracy here, which China does not. They have not only don't have a democracy, they have a centralized economy. So they have far fewer elasticities in their economy, like we do here in the United States. But we also have global supply chains. We might be the number one partner for China, but we want to be the number one partner worldwide. So what we need to be focused on here in the United States is making sure that America is the number one place to do business. That means having American businesses stay here and invest here, which they're starting to do thanks to the tax reform bill that was passed into law last mm -hmm. year, but also bringing businesses from around the world to be domiciled in the United States to hire American mm -hmm. workers and to give American okay. consumers let broad me, choice. Let me back. I, I agree with everything you just said. Okay, but back to China for a second. Yeah. I mean, how is it fair that they charge tariffs on our goods we don't charge it on theirs. And I know what you're going to say, oh, but it makes it cheaper for everybody to buy all the stuff that they want to buy at mm -hmm. Walmart. But in the interim, what happens? If you do not have a level playing field, what happens to your ability to produce as a nation? Well, I would take argue with the notion of a level playing field being that we can charge the exact same thing for every product. We don't make every single consumer good here, and that's okay, mm -hmm. because what we do do is build, uh, is build processes here, build industrial mechanics that allow us to not only produce products, but to trade globally. And that's not just with China. That's with right. every country but in the world. What that's do you do when they start stealing all your intellectual property and they start stealing your technology so that Trish, I'm with you I'm totally with you in there. other words I it's think... great that we do it right but if they can do it as well because they steal it from us yep then where do we wind up? I agree. I believe that we need extremely strong protections for intellectual property. This goes back to what we were talking about before, where the United States, as a, de a democratic nation, has very strong protections for our IP, and we need to export those around the world. China has long been a, uh, a villain in this cause, yeah. and they need to be held to task for that. And I completely agree. I do not believe that uh, brash tariffs are the way to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. We need to have a global community putting pressure on China, and something yeah. like the TTP would you be know, a way but, to do that. Then you gotta get you gotta get everybody on board, and you know Absolutely. it's a headache. If we have power, <laughs> if we have economic power, um, you know, and, and maybe we're, we're saying the same thing here because you're saying the threat of tariffs are not bad. Tariffs in action are kind of bad, um, but we do have a pretty powerful threat. And if you're gonna make a threat, you gotta be willing to follow through on that threat. I don't believe in 
you know, just throwing out rhetoric and, and not being willing to see it through, Maddie. Yeah, um, I, I agree with you there, but the American economy is a trump card in and of itself, and we should play it to its greatest strength, not to its greatest weakness. Uh, it's certainly a very interesting time, and it's nice to see the market recovering here on hope that China will actually start to level that playing field. Maddie, thank you very much. It's good to have you here. Very interesting yeah. conversation. At any moment, I want to remind everyone, guess who? Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg is going to be there on Capitol Hill. He is getting set to testify there before the Senate. It comes as his company.